Hi, this is Mori reporting from Berlin and in this video I want to wrap up the using React Hooks with the 3 series and uh, talk with you about uh, some of the most important things you should remember uh, yeah, when working with React and uh, D3. So yeah, stay tuned. So uh, at this point I want to mention that uh, uh, this doesn't mean that I will stop uh, creating videos about uh, React or D3 in the future. This just means that uh, this particular series is coming to an end. I will st still probably push videos about uh, data visualizations, but uh, in another context probably. Uh, that's that. And another thing I want to say thank you for all the support and all the tremendous feedback I got for this series. It was, uh, it was a blast and um, it was uh, really helping me out uh, pushing this series forward and uh, yeah, thank you. So the very first thing you should remember from this series is how to combine uh, yeah, React and D3 using React hooks. And uh, since the very beginning uh, of this series, I have been rendering this SVG DOM element down here in my components. And um, then I have been trying to pass this SVG DOM element to D3 so that D3 can handle uh, like everything that is happening inside of this SVG by passing it this SVG ref variable using the use ref hook. And uh, the use ref hook uh, or the SVG ref will update whenever um, the DOM elements have been rendered and it will contain a reference to the SVG DOM element. And um, yeah, the best time to access this um, SVG DOM element when all of the DOM elements have been rendered is in the use effect hook. Uh, which is currently collapsed um, and this use effect hook will uh, like be called for the very first time the DOM elements have been rendered and this is why it's the best time to access the um, DOM element which is living inside of this SVG ref and uh, when we like expand this use effect hook, you can see that I am passing the SVG DOM element which is living in this current property of the SVG ref uh, to D3 using the select function from D3. So this will basically wrap the SVG DOM, DOM element uh, like with this D3 wrapper, allowing you to do all the uh, D3 magic that you want. Also remember that uh, we have been wrapping our SVG in this div here uh, to pass it the wrapper reference, which we uh, are using to get the current uh, dimensions or the current width and height of our SVG because uh, using the Resize Observer API doesn't really uh, work when uh, observing an SVG element, uh, as it seems. And that is why we have been wrapping the um, like SVG in another diff to get the current, uh, like the correct width and height of our um, yeah, SVG. And uh, also remember that um, like the use effect hook is not only called um, when <clears throat> whenever the DOM elements have been rendered for the first time, but also whenever the things in this dependency array change. And so whenever the data or the dimensions, the width and height of our SVG changes, we want this use effect hook to be called again and uh, like produce the result that we want to have. So uh, the use effect hook and the dependencies that we have here, they bring me to the next most important thing uh, you should remember from this series, and that is updatability. So um, in the entire series, we have been building these charts and components with updatability in mind. And what that means is all of our D3 code or D3 logic uh, was inside of a single use effect hook that is getting triggered over and over again whenever the data changes, whenever the width and height of our SVG changes, whenever our props change, uh, and so on. And uh, that is really important because there are a lot of D3 examples out there which don't have this updatability in mind. And uh, they don't really care about changing data, they don't really care about changing width and height of the current SVG, and so on. So uh, here's one of these examples which doesn't really care about new or changing data coming in. And uh, this is the line chart uh, that they create. And right from the very beginning, you can see that uh, they create this diff here with the ID my database. And down here, they actually grab this diff with the ID and uh, they only once create or append this SVG element on the fly. Uh, and also only once they read this uh, CSV file here for their data. And then they go on by uh, basically creating group elements for their uh, axes and also creating 
or appending a path element for the line in their line chart. So um, this entire cool block is only called once, but if it were to be called uh, like multiple times, this code block will actually uh, would actually produce multiple SVGs, multiple group elements, uh, multiple path elements, and so on. And this is something that we did differently. We always reused uh, the elements which were there using the general update pattern, which is the next most important thing that you should uh, remember from the series. So the general update pattern is uh, D3's way of managing the DOM based on data. And uh, in this entire series, we have been uh, using this uh, general update pattern uh, to let D3 handle everything that is happening inside of a single SVG element. And uh, we said uh, that React should take a step back and uh, just basically provide this SVG um, to D3 so that we can uh, manage it from there. And uh, yeah, I've prepared some examples to demonstrate the general update pattern. So, and uh, this is how the general update pattern in D3 works. Uh, we have this data up here with these five elements. And uh, down here we are saying, hey, D3, um, select all of the like existing circle one elements uh, in my SVG and uh, synchronize them with the data I am giving you here, uh, this uh, data array with these five elements. And then D3 then kind of figures out, hey, uh, you told me to find all of the circle one elements in your SVG and synchronize them with the data you gave me. But uh, in the beginning, there actually are no circle one elements. And that is why it says, hey, you don't have any circles in your uh, like SVG, but five elements in your data array. And that is why you actually need to create five new elements in your uh, SVG to have the sync between the data uh, and the DOM. So this part that I have selected doesn't only give us information about the elements which need to enter uh, our SVG to have the sync between the data and the DOM, but it also gives us information about the like circle one elements that are already there and uh, circle one elements uh, that need to be removed from our um, SVG if we had more circle one elements than the elements in our data array, for example. And these three types of uh, elements, the entering, the updating, and the like exiting uh, elements, we then manage using the new join API in uh, D3. So by just passing this circle string to this uh, join function, uh, we are basically telling D3 to create a new circle DOM element in our SVG for every new piece of data. And uh, this join function will also automatically remove all of the elements which are no longer needed in our um, SVG. And uh, instead of just passing this like shorthand string to this join, we could also like in the very first video in the series, pass in three different callbacks. So one for the uh, entering elements, new elements, one for the updating elements and one for the like exiting elements, which are no longer needed. And uh, that would allow us to have total control over these three types of uh, elements. And uh, the, another cool thing about this a join API is that it continues by uh, returning a selection um, of both new and existing elements uh, in our SVG. So um, everything that is called after this join is actually applied to every uh, new element that has entered our SVG and every element that has already been existing in our SVG. So um, yeah, the most important line following the join is actually this uh, line here where we attach the class name circle one to every uh, new or updating um, element in our uh, SVG because otherwise we couldn't really uh, update the uh, circle one elements we are actually looking for. So uh, that is something that you should uh, keep in mind. So just for fun, I also added this like old way of working with the D3 general update pattern before this join API, uh, oh, these tooltips, before this join API was uh, introduced. And here you can see that um, I'm still selecting all of the elements with the class name circle two in this case, and synchronizing that with the uh, data same uh, as up here. And uh, I am saving the summary or the selection in the circles two variable, which represents all of the elements which need to enter, update or exit uh, in my SVG. And uh, the difference is that if I now were to immediately 
uh, like attach an attribute here without the join from above, then this attribute would only be applied to like existing or updating elements in my SVG. So uh, we don't know anything about the entering uh, elements yet. So what we do then for that is down here, we say circles two dot enter, which um, uh, grabs the entering elements from this summary here. And uh, for each entering uh, circle or for each new piece of data, we then create a new circle DOM element in our SVG. And then uh, we merge this uh, selection of entering uh, circles or entering elements with uh, the selection uh, of um, like updating elements. So that we, in the end, we have a combination of both entering and updating elements, same um, as what the join function in uh, the newer version of the general update pattern returns. So uh, now if we attach some attributes here, they will be applied to both entering and uh, updating elements. So uh, we also have uh, to handle the elements which need to be removed from our SVG in this old way of uh, the general update pattern. And for that, we would have to say circles2.exit, which uh, grabs the like exiting elements in this summary here. And for each ent uh, or for each exiting element in the summary, we call dot remove so that the like element is actually removed from the DOM because the summary itself doesn't really do anything. And uh, now you can see why this new join API is uh, so nice and so popular, I would say, because uh, now instead of having these like three different lines or blocks for uh, like entering, updating and uh, exiting elements, we now only have this one single join. So moving on, the next most important thing that you should know about uh, from this series are scales. And scales, I would say you can find in almost every single D3 example out there because they are um, like uh, responsible for transforming your uh, raw data into pixel values in your SVG so that you can actually render and uh, position stuff properly. And this is what data visualization is all about. And um, in this case, we're using this like scale linear um, for our X scale, which is mapping uh, the um, input values or the domain from zero to four, the index values in our uh, data array to the range from zero to 300 pixels, let's say the entire width of uh, my SVG. And if this X scale, which is a function in the end, receives the input value uh, like zero, then it will also return the pixel value of zero. And if it receives the input value of four, the index value of four, then it will return the like, entire width uh, of my uh, SVG. And if it receives something in the middle, then it will also be something in the middle of my uh, SVG. And uh, yeah. So um, there are many different scales out there, like scale band, which is often used for uh, bar charts, for example. Uh, but the special thing about scale linear is that it is not only able to map these values from zero to four to pixel values, but also um, like index values beyond zero or less than zero or greater than four. Uh, so if I were to give this X scale the input value of or index value uh, of five, then it would return me a pixel value which is actually like greater than the current width of my SVG. It would be out of uh, the bounds of my SVG. Um, and that is possible because the input and the output values, the domain and the range, they are both continuous from 0 to 4 and 0 to 300, let's say. So uh, when working with scales, uh, you most probably also want to get used to working with these like max or min or extent functions from D3 so that you can determine the highest or the lowest value in your data array to create a proper mapping in your uh, scales. And um, in this case, I know what is the highest or the lowest value in my data array because I just created it for demonstrational purposes. But in the real world, you don't always know that. And uh, Actually, in all the other examples, or in most of the other examples, I um, like define this data in my app component and pass it down to the like chart components as a prop. And uh, this is something that I strangely didn't do in this session. I will quickly fix that. 
So just as a quick fix, I now added this uh, data I had in my Finality component uh, to my app component. And uh, now I am passing this uh, data here to the Finality component. And I also added this button, which uh, like updates this data by uh, increasing each value by five. And you can see like uh, the updatability here I mentioned earlier also in play. So um, now the Finality component receives the data as a prompt, just uh, like it should. So the last important thing that you should remember from this series is this like odd D3 pattern where everything uh, that you import or use from D3 is actually a function that returns another function. So uh, this scale linear, for example, is a function where you configure your X scale using your domain and your range. And that results in another function which you then need to provide with some input values to receive your pixel values in the end. So um, it is always this kind of two-step process. And same uh, applies to the line function here, which results in a line generator function. So we're configuring this line generator with this like X, Y, and curve chain. And uh, in the end, this line generator, uh, line generator is transforming uh, this like entire data array we're passing it into a D attribute of um, uh, a path element, which is like the shape and form of a path element. So we're just attaching uh, that D attribute to uh, a path element we are creating down here. So yeah, that's it for this uh, video series. Uh, I hope you liked it. And you can find all of the code for this entire series in uh, my GitHub repo. It is in the description below. Uh, just um, like uh, notice that uh, all of the different sessions uh, reside in different branches. So uh, check them out if you like. And you can also find all of these videos and some articles or uh, other content related to uh, creative development on my website called uh, the moratorium.com. Uh, I want to push all of my YouTube content and some of my articles that I want to write exclusively uh, for this uh, channel. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or issues uh, with the uh, repo or some of the sessions, please just let me know. In some special cases, I might still also create new branches for some of your requests if you like. But uh, as a video series, I think uh, this series uh, has come to an end or I have closure now because I feel I need to uh, wrap this series up so that I can also focus on uh, other series, uh, which I want to uh yeah create so yeah i hope you liked it i hope you learned a thing or two uh yeah see you in the next series i would say yeah bye